Hey guys, my name's Thomas Busby and welcome to week two of me working out how to become a full-time photographer. So today is day six and I spent all of yesterday and I've just spent like the last hour trying to learn how to edit better and you know what I've learned most of all? I fucking hate it. <laughs> Oh man, I'm sorry, I don't, <laughs> I don't mean that. I don't hate editing, I do enjoy the reward from it, but I love shooting, taking photos far better than I do editing. I was going to dedicate this whole video just to how I developed an editing style, but I think I just need to get out and shoot more and take photos, drag you guys along and see if I can develop a style as I go. So today's Tuesday, I have a job on Sunday, which leaves me... Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, roughly four days of dedicated time just to photography. I'd like one of those to at least be a personal day so I can get some stuff cleaned up and hang out with a partner, which leaves three days dedicated to just photography, which is three sunrises and three sunsets. I'm going to assume one of them I'm not going to be able to make. It's going to be torrential rain or something like that. So we'll say I've got five sunrises and sunsets to shoot one subject. That subject is going to be pretty close to home, it's just 15 minutes up the road from me, is the Mount Egmont Goblin Forest. I need to take a photo of that, it's been a goal for a while, and I reckon in five sunrises and, suns five sunrises and sunsets, I can make it happen. Let's see what I'll get. actually pretty happy with those photos a little bit of dedication and repetition really worked out for me and I'm normally hyper picky so I thought what would be neat is after doing photo shoots I'd go through and give my photos a bit of a review and pass that on to you guys so first up the staircase I love that it kind of reminds me of that Lord of the Rings I can't remember what the steps are called but I do like those steps leading into it Finding a, a subject to focus on in forests is actually quite tricky. There's a lot of clutter and a lot of the um, nicer trees up high are actually very contrast because you're in the shade looking at the shadowy part and there against a bright sky. So following the paths really work for me. The next one that's close up, it's not a phenomenal shot on its own but as part of the whole group I do like it. Nice and sharp and it kind of helps give that bit of a feel but overall, I don't know, is it sharp where it needs to be? Sharp enough. Yeah, I'd give that a 4 out of 10. First one, first one I love actually. I'm giving that, for the whole series, that might be my favourite, but we'll see. Another path leading through. For that, those wondering about what that, like that fog is, that line at the top of the shot, I'll explain that later on. Uh, this one's actually maybe a little bit too bright, maybe a little too blue as well. I might need to go through and tweak that one before I share it on social media. Another nice path. Nice shadows all around. Not as good as the first one, but still not bad. I'd give that man maybe a 6 out of 10. Yeah, I don't think any of these are going to compare as good to that first one. So once again, another 6 out of 10. But still loving the path. And as a series, I think all these path shots work pretty well together. Kind of like the other close-up, this one was purely just done to help give a little bit more closer detail to the environment and to help the set work. Mm, this one doesn't really actually fit in with the Goblin Forest theme, so... As far as seeing social media time, it might not get posted. However, it was the setting and that, that light up on the top right hand corner up there. I did really like that and I was trying to capture some of that and it, it didn't quite come through, but that's why it's in there. And overall, it's still a pretty nice dynamic shot. So this shot here, I actually sh took with a different lens. This is with a um, 10 to 24. Very, very wide, just trying to, I like that. I don't 
know what would you call it, that jellyfish of a tree just floating there. It did look pretty neat, but once again, it's kind of that contrasty situation. It was very hard to capture. Uh, the tree on its own is not bad, but there's a lot going on. And so when you see in some of these previous shots back here, there's like that line going across the top there. And quite a few of these others had this like fog look. Even on the top of that, you can just make it out in the top hand corner like a haze. To add that haze, what I did is I had my shot and I got my camera. And I literally, well that, that explains it and that's the end result. And you can see it's got these haze around it, but I think it would be easier to sh show you. Give me two secs. To get that haze, that look, what I did is I'm using here the 23, and I, for most of those shots, use the 23 1.4 lens. Um, I set my camera onto a 10 second timer, focused up, and 1.4, shooting at 1.4 is actually very important for this, which is quite unlike landscape, but for this it works. You take your shot, 10 second timer, and as close as you can to the lens, using the screen on the back to frame it up, you bring these just into the shot. to add some haze. The different colour leaves definitely make a difference, like the lighter side of that one definitely made for more of a foggy look, where the darker side is more of a shadow, but that's how I did that foggy kind of look. Thank you very much for following along. If you'd love to buy one of these prints as a way to support what I'm trying to do here, feel free to flick me a private message on any of the social media formats I'm using, or even jump onto my website and flick me an email. I'll leave all the links for that down below, but otherwise, until next time.